What's up, what's up everybody? Carson, Nick, we're here for another midnight review, even though it's nowhere near midnight uh, for Glasshouse Films. And this week we got Upgrade. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> I mean, looking at everything else on the docket, we got lucky. I would've been okay with Action Point, too. Uh, okay, yeah. But Action uh, Point is not a movie that like demands being seen in theaters. No. So. Yeah, but I mean, it was also there was also a drift which someone I follow on Twitter was like, yeah, if you want to know about the movie Adrift, just watch the trailer. It's the whole movie in two point five minutes. I'm like, oh lord. I, I felt a bit like that with the upgrade trailer though too. A little bit. There unfortunately. was just the one kind of spoilery like yeah guy getting shot. I was like, wait. But we clearly saw him at several points in the movie, yeah. and now we know how he goes out. Like, he goes out spectacularly. Yeah. So yeah, sad. upgrade. Um, I mean, plot-wise, it seems very similar to RoboCop, except he didn't get like everything blown off. Like, and he's not a cop. And he's not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> so like the two biggest, but he's neither a robot nor a cop. He's like man, kind of machine. But that's not as good of a name, man kind of machine. Yeah. So, Civilian kind of machine. Yeah. Um, Logan Gordon Green, something like that. Whatever. Main, I don't know main in this movie. Uh, Whitey. Whitey and his uh, his wife uh, his wife gets killed during I'm assuming some um, kind of mugging or something. Some sort of violent future crime. Yeah. Yeah. Very cyberpunk looking, which and does some stuff for that. Um, he is paralyzed from, like, the neck down, and some, it looks nefarious, some nefarious looking entity, but it could just be same as with RoboCop. No, we're not really nefarious, we're just business. Yeah. Um, but they, they say, hey, we can help you walk again, they put this thing into his body, and he basically learns that he can be kind of a superhero with it. A very graphic, Punisher-esque superhero, but still. And one of the things that has drawn me more to this movie beyond the, like, ludicrous levels of violence is the camera work. It's very... I mean, this is written and directed by one of the co-creators of Saw. You know, mm -hmm. his, his best friend is like James Wan, so they have very similar visual styles. So it's it's like, okay, let's really play with how the camera is moving during an action scene. Yeah, like, I think one of the things with, like, with the Saw movies, whether mm -hmm. you like them or not, is the camera work is oddly, like, smooth for yeah. how intense it is. Yeah. Which, like, I kind of noticed in the trailer. It's like, you like, you know, the scene where he's lying on the ground and then the camera follows him up and it's yeah. like, he's, like, completely fucking a dude up in that scene. Yeah, you can... You but can, it's, like, this nice, smooth, clean transition, but it's, like, so intense. Yeah. And, and it's, like, you can really go one of two ways with it. You can do that or you can do a lot of shaky cam and they're, like... Well, we've seen enough of the shaky cam stuff. This doesn't look very shaky cam. Yeah, and it looks, it looks incre yeah, as you said, very smooth, very choreographed, which I don't have a problem with. I like very heavily choreographed fight scenes, if they're done right. So, all I want it to be, I mean, it's 90, what, you said 95, 95 minutes. minutes? Okay. 95 minutes, just don't be boring. Don't have any scenes where I'm like, let's get back to the killing, and then there's like a brief murder scene, and then it's back yeah, to like, I don't need, like, I don't need to know about, you know, oh, his girlfriend was like pregnant or something, or which is like some sad, you know, give me like a, give me like sort of this John Wick-esque motivation where it's like, okay, like we know, we know what happened, we know what he wants to go do, and now let's mm -hmm. go watch him do it. Yeah. Very simple. And that's all it needs to be. That's all it needs to do. And if it can do that, violent, great. be violent. Oh yeah, yeah. be violent. You know? Yeah, I think I think uh, nailed that one already. But yeah. yeah. So uh, let's go and see this. Right. This. As a quadriplegic, it must be frustrating for you, someone who likes to get things done with their hands. Here's the thing: four guys murdered my wife. I could find these men and 
do. So there's there's like two halves of Logan Marshall Green's performance that I think need to be discussed. The the main character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As far as his emoting throughout the entire film, kind of wooden. Kind of wooden. Fine, but kind of wooden. However, the physicality and what he is asked to do with his body is exceptional. I, I, I kind of felt like, I, I didn't think he was really wooden. I thought he did a good job at like acting like a dude who just has no idea what his body is doing. Those moments he Especially, did better. Like during, it did a yes. good job of like doing his body stuff. Yeah, that's like what his, I mean. Like the actual but, but, physicality. But like his head kind of being like the fuck? Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you know, like when shit's yeah. going down. I I would like it. Like he had to... a pretty reasonable reaction for a guy who just found out that his body's I, like a contract killer. I, I would I would liken his his talking performance, I guess, to that of like mid to late nineties Keanu Reeves. Not bad. Works does what it needs to do. Yeah, I mean the the movie was pretty like straightforward yeah. though. And like his character is supposed to be a very like I mean not a lot even, of, not, there's not a lot of like bells and whistles to his character, you know. Yeah, I mean and he, that's even before anything happens to him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was kind of like the the point of his character's introduction. Yeah, was like, and, I, and I get that. They're kind of in, like, the the setting is, like, a, a world on, like, the cusp of cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. Like, it's cyberpunk, but it's, like... It's not quite cyberpunk. Like, the, the, the rich people have the cyberpunk. The rich people in the military have it, and it's slowly getting rolled out to everyone like, else. Like, but even then, it's, like... Maybe because they talk about how pretty much all the tech you see in that movie is like experimental, and that the world isn't like hasn't like degraded to like this yeah like disgusting like back alley cybernetics and, kind of thing. And, and in fact, I would definitely I would probably say that the way the movie presents things is that the only parts of society that aren't that all of society is actually really good. They're really well off, and but the only parts that aren't are the ones that haven't embraced moving forward. They've, like, chosen... They make it yeah. clear they've chosen not to. Like, the, I think when the, they keep talking about New Crown, I'm like, yeah. this area doesn't want to. Yeah. But everything That's else... That's what keeps it straight. from... Like, the uh, the big part of the cyberpunk is, like, the full integration of technology. Yeah. But, like, in this movie, the reason I say it's on the cusp of it is it's, like, there's no... People aren't just walking around with implants. Mm-hmm. If they if they are, it's like stupid shit, like a phone. Yeah, like phones, kind of being or, like an implant. Yeah, but and, everything else is like very clearly experimental. The only thing that they that the general the only technology that the general public is exposed to is like constant surveillance. Yeah. The fact that the but cops that's just also, have drones like everywhere. But even with that being said, that's not like a major thrust of it's what not, the movie's it's about. It's not. Which I appreciate. We, I really we haven't do. hit. The, we're not like we're clearly not in a dystopia. Yes. In this universe. Yeah. Um, but it could get there. And and you I can think see it getting there. And I definitely think part of the cusp aspect to that is that it's it's like oh that's different, but I'm not going insane because of how different that is. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not like, what? That's impossible. It's like, just like, oh. Like, list of okay. common technologies in this movie is largely, it's like stuff we have now, but just on a large scale. It's like, yeah. it's more like the like the Logan kind of future where it's like, yeah, that everybody's would be got, everybody's got like a self-driving car. Mm -hmm. You know, like the scene in Logan where all the semi-trucks are, like, self-driving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, like, not a big deal. It's like, okay, everybody's got self-driving cars. Well, I, I don't know about everyone. Not everyone. I mean, you do see on the streets, but yeah. there's a ton of them. Yes. They're common. They're, like, self-driving cars. Yeah. Uh, like, smart homes. Yeah. But smart homes with, like, some more robotics integrated into it. But not nearly at the, not, like, Blade Runner levels of tech. Yeah. But just like, oh, like robot arms that'll make you a milkshake. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like douchey Bluetooth phones. Like everybody just has an earbud in mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, 
cash is largely gone. Yeah. It's a kind of a throwaway line. Which is funny because we are kind of moving in that direction. These are all things that are very feasible. That, that like, yeah. if the, we could, we could live in the majority of this world in like 20 years. Yeah, it's it's definitely right up there with like the uh, the max headroom like five minutes from now kind of like yeah. title card. It doesn't have one like that, but you but if they were to slap that on, be like that fits like. A but good. all of like the super cyberpunk shit in this movie is very clearly like this is something that people like don't even know about. Yeah, but it, even even at the same time, it would be something where another character could be like, wow, this is some Black Ops stuff. And it's like, yeah, but it's not magic. Yeah. Well, like, like one of the things, and, and this isn't this isn't a spoiler, but there's a point where, um, like, you can see this in the trailer, like, there's the gun in the hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, a character... That's, like, the yeah. inciting incident. And a, and, a, yeah. and a character in the movie sees the gun in the hand, and they're like really like it's not they don't have a normal they're not like oh cool gun in the hand they're like that guy has a fucking gun in his hand yeah but it's, it's also like, it's not normal but they're like it's you very clearly the first time you've ever seen anything like that but it's yeah. not out of the realm of possible they're not exactly. like this technology doesn't exist they're like oh my god like why are we why are we doing this and i and i think that those Little world building aspects, something this movie excels. I know we've we've spent like five minutes talking about this. It's like that's not a majority of this movie, but it's something it does really well. Kind, not to the same extent, but kind of like it's how good John Wick it did sets it. like building. it comes. You know, it sets the precedent that like what the characters going through could actually happen. Yes, and that like they definitely live in a world where like this technology is like about to. Yeah, Could it's about to break out. Dream. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Um, so, with that being said, the um, the film itself is about um, a very happy married couple get into a they get into a car wreck, and then the wife is straight up murdered. The wife is summarily executed. <laughs> yeah, and, and then the husband the is yeah he's paralyzed, and. You know, he he's kind of almost pushed to the brink of like, I don't really want to live anymore. And at about that time, a a client of his, because he, he rebuilds old cars and he rebuilt an old car mm -hmm. for one of his clients, is like, hey... Just a, a billionaire, a tech billionaire, yeah, basically. Who, every time I saw him, I'm like, man, he looks a lot like James Dean and it freaks me out. Um, and he goes, okay, I can put this thing into you and you'll be able to walk again mm -hmm. and Logan Marshall Green's character is like alright I guess I'll do it and in doing so it also prods him along to start trying to figure out you know who killed his wife and why and <laughs> then some just cool stuff happens I mean the computer helps him out in some obvious and then less obvious ways. And I appreciate the way that it's used, yeah. the way that it's the way written that it, like, into the film. evolves throughout the movie. Is yes. Like, because he, it, it's kind of like the stem, is what they call, it's mm -hmm. called stem, yeah. has a voice and he finds that out pretty much almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And was that lightning? I think that was lightning. Uh, that was distracting. Yeah. Uh, but he, <laughs> he, what, he finds out that it can talk to him, only he can hear it. He can talk to it, but he actually has to talk out loud, so he ends yeah. up looking crazy to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he thinks uh, he's crazy And then he thinks with. he's crazy yeah. to begin with. But he can basically tell it what to do and find out some other stuff it can do mm -hmm. and, you know, tries to solve his wife's murder. And... The, and that's the story, really. There's the, not, there's not a yeah, whole ton to it. It is very straightforward, and if you are, if you really dig this kind of movie, this kind of story, you can pretty easily guess where it's going to go the whole time. Kind of. And there's there, nothing I, wrong. With I that. get. I tried to guess part of it, and that they. I don't want to. You know, you say if if they throw red, you know, if you say red herring, people are going to look for red herring. It's like telling some. It's like telling yeah. a twist. 
But there's definitely like they give you enough information on different ways that it could go mm-hmm. that you could kind of guess maybe like three ways the movie could go. Well, what they're more... all very really viable, and yeah. you kind of don't really know. I mean, you can obviously you can guess you can guess where it's going to go. Yeah. But if you're really paying attention to the exposition drop of the movie, it really is just a guess because there was three ways the movie could have gone. Yeah. Well, I more, think more based what on I'm the getting at. Given, yeah. But if you've seen like this, I don't know. I don't want to say if you've seen this kind of movie. You've seen this kind of movie. I, like, I, if I mean, if you've seen, the storytelling's not like crazy. There's not. No. It's it's not gonna. There's not gonna be like this annihilation level of like thought after the movie no. where you're trying to analyze every I am every still analyzing it. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's not it. like that. Yeah. It really is just like can you guess where it's going to go? But it is and you it have doesn't like a even 33% chance yeah. of being right. And it doesn't even ask you to do that. It's like, hey, it doesn't strap really. in. We're we're going to have some fun. It doesn't really. Stuff. There's just little tidbits where you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, wait, what?" Yeah. And then there's another little tidbit where you're like, "Oh, wait, what?" Yeah. And, it's, and then you finally get to the, you know, you finally get to like the climax of the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're like, oh, I got it right. Or like, oh, I didn't get it right. Yeah. And then that's the end of the movie. There's not much thought you got to do afterwards. And, and I got to say, big kudos to this movie because I've seen a lot of movies like this that die. Just they straight up don't work because cool action scene. Oh, my God. Let's get through the story crap. No, this film. It's that, a tight the action, 95. Yeah, the action wasn't crazy. Like, it wasn't. I don't want to say there wasn't a ton of it, but it's not like one of those fucking just body count movies. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely a low budget action film that it's like okay, we can do X Y and Z and we can execute it perfectly but we won't step outside of that. Like there's and it bodies. Does it well. There's it, it There's know. bodies. Yeah. My boy's ca- he's catching bodies. <laughs> yeah. But not With like these yeah, hands. not like it's not like a ton where you know you, you, uh, if I go back I could probably think to, back to every death. Yeah. Really, like but they but, were all good. And but it was like, in, in that same vein, it's like every death is pretty memorable. They, hey, yeah, like like they're pretty brutal. Yeah, and a lot of them had a pretty big like impact on like where the story was going. Yes, it wasn't a lot, it wasn't a lot of grunt killing. Yes, like, it wasn't just a successive like you know just slashing grunts left and right. One of the uh, a key screenwriting trick is the you know every action scene is supposed to actually cause more problems than it solves. And this film definitely sticks to that. And it does it very well. And I mean, that it does that, but at the same time, you're not like, oh, this is tedious. It's never tedious. Yeah. The actual exposition, the way the story goes, it's never tedious. It's like, we're getting in, we're gonna tell you what's going on, we're gonna move. Mm-hmm. And you know And it was it was smart in the way that like I felt like every character was doing like what an actual person would do yes. in that situation. I was never like, oh, like why is the main character doing this? Like mm-hmm. there was never just like this obvious misstep that just makes you just fucking groan. Yeah, in fact, the movie in one particular scene goes out of its way to be like, okay, even if you have any questions like that going forward, this scene is gonna make you go, okay, well, if they can do that, they can do all this too. Mm-hmm. And it does it really well. Um, and then okay, the action itself, really good. Like really it's, good. It's that pitch perfect, low budget. You know, we can we can afford to kill twenty guys in kind of cool way, or we can kill fifteen in a really great way. Yeah. And the, the thing I liked, which I could, I I felt like I had a good feeling after watching the trailers, was whenever he switches kind of into like STEM mode, mm-hmm. the camera just changes like big time. You get yeah. like super. It gets like super focused and like gyroscopic oh, in a way. Oh, the best like, way to you know. um, best way to put that would be um, the action scenes in Kingsman. How it's very focused and the camera, like everything. Like the camera the, moves around the character, not around. Like, well, like yeah, the camera, it's not. The camera's like the your the action, like the the person, the people fighting are always in like the center. Yeah, and then the camera is just moving around that. And what the Part of what the action does really well in that regard, besides being able to see everything clearly, thank the Lord, is 
because it goes to that stem, it's that artificial, you know, it's that AI that's running the show at that moment, it has an artificial move to the camera. It doesn't yeah. feel natural and it works and it looks so cool. And you know, it's it's definitely a film that I can't wait till this thing comes out on Blu-ray. I'm just I'm gonna buy it and put it on all the time. It is really good. This is a good movie. Yeah, just solid, solid action. As, film. as far as like not having to watch another like Disney movie goes, <laughs> this is like a pretty good start. Yeah. For the summer. Oh yeah. Because like. I mean, Dad, Disney yeah, technically or, Deadpool is a Disney movie. Disney or just uh, superhero. Just as far as like superhero movie, yeah. like as far as just any, well, because I'm counting Solo in this too. Like, D yeah, I'm just you know, I, I feel a bit of the Marvel fatigue and the Star Wars fatigue. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the Deadpool fatigue yet, but even then, like it's still in the same like comic book. The realm. thing is, Deadpool is so volatile that if it doesn't work as perfectly as it does in those movies. Then it's gonna fall flat completely. Just done. Yeah. yeah, and th this is a good start. Like. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm a big sucker for these you know these low budget indie action films that do it right, and this totally does it right. It does. I mean another another one that I would definitely point to, if you're if you're a big fan of, not action movies exactly like this, but like micro budget action films, mm -hmm. is Wheelman on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, so what are the, good. One of the big things is like I kind of like in this movie to dread a little yes. bit. Where like it's, I was gonna say when you're I was gonna when, you're, you'd when say you're done with it, you're like that was the movie. Yep. And like that was it. I got what was happening from beginning to end. But it also doesn't just like forego cool shit. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't just not explain like the world they live in and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like. You know, I, like Dread does a really good example of like throughout the movie showing like the different kinds of technology they yeah. have and like the expectations like people have living in that world. And I feel like when it comes to like sci-fi and like it's kind of almost not want to say I, I kind of want to say specifically cyberpunk because like a big aspect of cyberpunk is like is like the intersection of like the day-to-day -day living of like humans and like their technology. Yeah. And if you don't explain that, like if you don't explain how, like you just jump into it, you, you have to you be can't really in, you good can't if get, you jump you into it. You just can't get us into it. You One know, of, you, I mean, two of the best examples of cyberpunk they throw you into the deep end, but you can still get by with it. It's Blade Runner and Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah, but that that's next level. That's a that's a very different kind of film too. But there's but there's so many movies that like, I feel like they throw you into this kind of cool world mm -hmm. and maybe they give you like one or two tidbits and then that's just it where is and this you're film like, what? You're like, like I'm, like, I'm like what's what's going on yeah you know like you it, it, it takes like their own setting for granted they're like mm -hmm. uh we don't need to explain this i'm like you do need to explain this yeah. Yeah. just a little bit and this movie did a good job of that like Absolutely. i very clearly understood the world they lived in and then it told a story that didn't have really any like loose ends by the end. You're like, mm -hmm. and that's and that's, that's the, the end way of the story. Like, goes. That's the way the story ends. Yep. Damn, that was a good film. I I will good. say, don't watch the Red Band trailer if you haven't watched it already. If you just, haven't just watched, just don't watch it. any trailers. Yeah. Like, there are. I mean, I'll splice a little bit of trailer footage into this, but it's as you probably have already seen. It's like exposition trailer footage. Yeah, because the, I want to say like with the movie, it doesn't necessarily have like a low body count, but the body count is like important. Yes. And there's very like there's very few like I was sort of, like I said earlier there's very little like grunt killing, mm -hmm. and the red band trailer shows a pretty good amount of. Action. The exclamation point kills, I'd say. Yeah, and so I think it would be better to go in and like not yeah, see them. Definitely, but even if you had, which we not had, even just for the story, just for the spectacle. Yeah, and even even if you have, which again we have, you're just, really it's not going to ruin. Yeah. I mean, we were sitting there, we're like, oh, yeah. Like, I, I thought the movie really could have gone. If you pay, if you pay attention, I can really think of three ways the movie could have gone, mm -hmm. and. I think two of them are pretty obvious. Yeah. 
The third one, I can talk about after this, but I can't even really talk about it at all because it's yeah. pretty spoilery. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, solid film. Go check it out. It's just, it's really good. Please, please give this movie your money because I get a feeling this movie is going to stick around for, like, three weeks. Disney doesn't need more of your money. If you, yeah. Like, go if support you, independent cinema. Go support independent cinema. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but I am that guy. I'll, I'll be that guy a little bit. Yeah. Just this, so, just for this, like. Yeah. Check it out. And next week, next week, isn't that like Ocean's Eight and Hotel Artemis? I don't know. I can't see the signs from here. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see the posters. Uh, I think it's Ocean's 8 or Hotel Artemis, and I'll be honest with you, I'd rather see Hotel Artemis. I don't even know what Hotel Artemis is, dude. Neither do I, but people say, like, Hotel Artemis, it, people have said it's like if all of John Wick was just, like, the goings-on of the hotel and stuff, and I'm like, oh. That sounds cool. Yeah, I could get I'm into not, that. I'm not a huge Ocean's fan. Uh, so. I mean, yeah, you're just... Period, straight up. I'm I'm a bigger heist film and Ocean's Eleven person, but anyway. I like heist films, to a certain extent. You I, know what? No, I take it back. I kind of don't like heist films because I get too stressed out. Oh uh, yeah. I get stressed to the point where I like stop enjoying that's, the movie. That's why you can't watch, you know, Heat. Cause yeah. you're just like, shit, what's gonna happen yeah. for three right. hours? Even watching Logan Lucky. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like, you. It's like a funny you were movie. You freaking out the whole but, time like, for a solid forty minutes. What about like, the arm? Like, what about the arm? <laughs> you can't just not like. I can't. I literally couldn't follow the rest of the movie. Oh the yeah, and I, movie, I was but. trying to be like, don't worry, because I actually had the same thought process the oh, first God. time I watched it. I was like, it. I'm glad I didn't see that in theaters. Oh I man. Really just quit. So yes, next week we'll figure it out. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash glassfilmshouse, twitter at glassesfilms, and facebook.com slash glassesfilms. See you all next week. Bye.